For by grace you are saved, or are having been saved, through faith, and this is not from yourselves. It's a gift from God. It's not from works, so that no one can boast. Our salvation is simply by believing that Jesus Christ died on a cross in our place for our sins. He was buried and he rose again. And that by believing that, we are forgiven and right with God. That's what he calls grace. He did it all. All we do is say, yeah, he did it. (laughs) I'm forgiven because of that. It's that simple. But that brings us then to verse 10. For we are his workmanship. We pointed out this is not the word work here. It's actually a word for, for doing things, working on a thing. It's a different word. And we are created in Christ Jesus for or upon the occasion, upon the opportunities of good works, which God has previously prepared beforehand so that we would walk in them. We would live our lives in these good works that God has prepared. Are those good works maybe things that your church says, hey, we need help with this, or we need help over, or this person needs help. Yeah, those might be the good works. But maybe sometimes even when you're going to do one of those, God puts another good work in your path that you weren't even expecting to see. And you get that opportunity. And we're going to take a look at one of those good works today. I'm Pastor Tim Holscher, and we're looking at good works in the life of believers, opportunities God's given us to have him do something in our lives. As we saw yesterday in John chapter 3 and verse 21, God accomplishes the work in us. When we're living by the truth, when we are realizing that we are seated in Christ at his right hand and that we are free in Christ, free from the dominion of our sin nature, God can work out these works through us as believers. He tells us in Philippians 1.6, I'm sure of this, that he who started a good work in you will carry it to completion or unto maturity until the day of Jesus Christ. See, God's doing a good work in you. That's that saving work. That's that perfect tense being saved that we saw in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8, the first day that we started these studies. And so God's doing a good work in it. But the result of God doing a good work in us is that there are other good works that we get to participate in. And we're going to go now to 2 Corinthians chapter 9. And it says, now Paul's writing the Corinthians. We got two church, well, we got three groups of believers. Let's start with that. There's the Corinthians. They're a group of people that are living in what we would call the southern part of Greece or Achaia. There are the Macedonians. Those are up on the north edge of, of where Greece is. They're poor, by the way, whereas the Corinthians are, well, at least rich uh, from a human point of view. The Macedonians are poor believers. And then we have believers that are impoverished, really in need due to the way they're being treated uh, by unsaved people, unsaved Jewish family and relatives and former business associates and all of these different things over in Judea. Okay, over close to where Jerusalem is. And the and they have organized, the believers have organized gifts, not just once, but different times to send gifts from these believers in places like this over to these believers in Judea to help them. I love this idea because a lot of times when pastors talk about giving, we always think, well, give something to the church. We're going to pass the plate and make sure that you're generous and give till it hurts and fill in all the other blanks and things that people say. Uh, And most people think, yeah, you just want more money in your salary or something like that. But this is beautiful because this is the number one reason that the church collected funds. It wasn't to fund building programs. It wasn't to fund pastoral salaries. It was there to help believers that had real needs. So 2 Corinthians 9.1, with all that hopefully in our minds, for it is necessary for me to write to you about this service, this ministry to the saints. See, they're serving the saints. Because I know your eagerness to help. I keep boasting to the Macedonians, these believers to the north, about this eagerness of yours that Achaia has been ready to give since last year. And your zeal to participate is stirred up most of them, but I am sending these brothers so that our boasting about you may not be empty in this case, and so that you may be ready, just as I kept telling them. 
In other words, I told them that they're ready to give, and, well, I hope you really are when we show up. For if any of the Macedonians should come with me and find that you are not ready to give, we would be humiliated or ashamed, not to mention you also, by this very confidence that we have had in you. In other words, you guys, Paul's thinking, I think legitimately you guys really wanted to participate in this, and you guys were excited about it a year ago, but... I, I think Paul's getting a hint that, well, maybe some of them got excited about it and now they're like, oh, I don't know, you know, it's been a year and and he just wants to make sure. If you're going to participate, make sure you're ready ahead of time. Verse 5, Therefore I thought it necessary to urge these brothers to go to you in advance and to arrange ahead of time this generous contribution. Now this word generous is literally a word of blessing. And it's a word about, it's a, something to be about good words. And so, they had, which he says, you had promised, so uh, you, you had promised, in other words, you promised ahead of time, you promised a year ago that you were going to participate in this blessing, this, these good things saying, we want to participate. We want to love these saints. We want to do this for them. And so this may be ready as a, and we have this generous gift, but again, it's the word blessing. And people think, well, you know, how else do you translate the word? But the word means to say something good about and not as something you feel forced to, to do. Well, we're going to talk about this word blessing here in just a second. Verse 6, my point is this, that the person who sows sparingly, real good translation, will reap sparingly. And the person who sows, and we translate this generously, but the word literally means a blessing, good words. In other words, they're saying, they're looking at this and they're saying, I'm giving this, but I'm giving this because these are brothers in Christ, and I want to share together in those, and I want to share in their need by sharing some of what God's allowed me to have with their need. I really think that's why he uses the word blessing, but we think, well, he's contrasting it to sparingly. Well, sparingly is like, well, I don't really want to give to them, whereas a blessing, a good thing is saying, these are my brothers. I really do want to participate. He says they reap, and again, they reap a blessing. Well, you think when that, think about these, these believers over there. They've been ostracized from families. They've been kicked out of houses. They've lost business. <laughs> All these things have happened. I just think sometimes we don't wrap our heads around how hard life had become for those who identified as Christians under the persecution that started after the, the, the Jewish council uh, killed Stephen. And you can read about it over in Acts 8 and even the first part of Acts 9. But... Having said that, now these believers that are these Gentile, largely Gentile believers, although there's Jewish believers in, in Corinth, in Philippi, perhaps in Thessalonica, these believers and others are collecting funds to send to these people over there in Judea and help them. And you think those people are going to get that money and go, oh, well, that's really cool. I got some money. I can eat now. You think they're going to go, Wow, brothers and sisters that don't even know me from Macedonia, from from where? Corinth? Seriously? That I've heard things about that city. There are believers there, and they sent something to help us. Oh, God, oh, God, thank you for these great people. In fact, Paul's going to use the word thanks down below with regard to these people, how they would respond. But I'm going to picture that. You know, many years ago when I was in seminary, I was working two jobs, and uh, boy, the economy had tanked. Nobody, I mean, I, I knew people that had good technical jobs that were working as janitors in places just to pay the bills because it, everything had just gone sideways. And uh, I'm working two jobs, not making a lot of money, and we got to the point that I didn't know how we were going to pay our rent. Uh, and we weren't squandering our money or anything. And I went over one day to our mailbox, opened it up, and pull out an envelope with a cashier's check. I don't know who it's from. To this day, I have no clue where this came from. My wife and I weren't going around, oh, we're in need, we're in need, we can't pay the rent this month, don't know what we're going to do. You know, we had some money that we were going to hopefully put towards the rent and hopefully they would, you know, let us ride until we, I, until I got paid something else. But that took care of that rent. Took care of a little bit of rent even for the following month. But the point was, Somebody, I presume a believer, just felt that they should send something to us. And it was somebody somewhat local within the 
and we were in the Portland area. So it was somebody local because it came from a Portland bank, but it doesn't make any difference. The whole point was, this is what I'm getting at, my wife and I, I can definitely say, said good words about whoever that was. God, thank you for this person that whoever they are, however they felt that they needed to, for whatever reason they felt they needed to send us this, thank you for their letting you work through them and help us with this need. Do you think that the believers down there in Judea or over there in Judea wouldn't do that? Yeah, they would. That would be the blessing. So each one of you should give just as he has decided. See, there's not a pre... Hey, hey, if you guys are rich, you better give. Oh, don't even give 10%. You better be giving 15. No, Paul says no. There's no requirement for what believers have to give anywhere at any time. You make that determination in your heart. You don't do so, and this word reluctantly is literally out of grief. If it hurts, well, you maybe need to get your attitude straight or just not give. Or under compulsion, it's necessary. If you don't give, this is going to fail. This ministry will fail. You don't want to be responsible for the ministry. If, if somebody does that to you, you can guarantee they don't know the word of God. If God can't fund or take care of something, maybe they need to think differently about how they're doing ministry. Or maybe they need to even think whether it's what God wants them to do because he's not taking care of it. But the point being is not under compulsion because God loves a cheerful giver. He likes a person that's like, I can't believe I get to participate in this. My God, he could take care of all this, but he's allowing me, this person down here, to share in the needs of somebody else in this way. In verse 8, and God is able to make notice. all grace to overflow. See, he looks at this, this giving. If you went back to chapter 8, the Macedonians looked at their giving as a thing of grace. That it's by grace that they get to give. Wow. So this grace will overflow to you so that because you have enough or are sufficient, what you have is sufficient. I don't think he's even talking about their material goods here. I think he's talking about what God does, the work God does in you. That's sufficient. And it's going to make whatever you're able to give, whatever you do give, sufficient of everything in every way at all times. And it will over, and that you will overflow then abound or overflow in every good work. Right there. This is why we came to the passage. This gift to help another believer in a real need was or is good work or every good work, meaning there might be other opportunities to help other believers in different settings. I'm not saying that every believer has to do this. Maybe you're in a place where there's not a believer around you that really needs this kind of help. But maybe there is. And sometimes as Christians, we're always like, well, you know, I think they probably are having financial problems because, well, didn't they go to town last week? And didn't they eat out, I think? Hmm. Well, they need to be more responsible. I don't want to help them. We can always justify not helping people. But to actually look at a person and not feel guilty about this, but actually genuinely look at them and say, you know what? They are a brother or sister in Christ, and maybe they are going through some hard times, and I do want to help. God, is that what you want me to do? You want me to help? Yeah, well, how much could I help? And just let God help you participate, and that could be a good work. And you might put some money in an envelope and go over and stick it in their door. They don't have to know it's you. Slip it in their Bible when you're at church and they're not looking, or maybe just walk up and say, you know what? I'm just confident God wants me to share this with you. I love you, and may you enjoy what God does. I, I don't know how God wants you to do it. But this is something that maybe sometimes might be a good work God has for you. There's a lot more. Read the rest of the passage. There's even more that the Apostle Paul has to say about this. In fact, go all the way back into chapter 8 and read both chapters. They all deal with this issue. But it is something that can be a good work for, uh, for us to do. Saved by grace, but saved upon the opportunities to actually participate in doing some good works that God could do through us. But you're going to need to remember who you are in Christ. Where he's saying, have a good day in the Lord. Remember who you are in Christ so that you'll see those good work opportunities. Those things God puts in your path so that you can meet them 
when God shows them to you, when God brings them before you. As always, thank you so much for joining me today.